All right, and uh, welcome to episode six, everyone, of uh, Somalia LP Insights. Uh, my name is Tarek, and I am coming to you from Somalia Finance. And here with me, Zaki Mannion, co-founder of Somalia Finance, to give us his insights that we as liquidity providers need to know in this episode six. How are you doing, Zaki? I am doing great. We had a great weekend. All right, congratulations. What happened? Um, we had uh, $1.75 million uh, in various tokens liquidity added by the Sommelier app. It's pretty exciting. Um, you know, people are using the app, people are running into problems. We saw a bunch of people whose uh, MetaMask is uh, was configured for Matic Polygon uh, uh, run into some problems with our app. Uh, every, every Web3 builder is now going to have to start, you know, providing the right user interface and nudges to to change your meta, your MetaMask settings network to the right network. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're moving into a multi-chain world. You know, it's interesting. You just said, uh, you know, a lot of people were having Matic errors uh, while trying to use Similia. What do you think is happening over at Polygon Matic right now? Yeah. Um, I mean, a, a couple of things, and I think it like sort of is reflective of like kind of where we are um, as an industry, you know, um, sort of interesting matic is kind of like a is like alt cosmos in many ways it's built off of tenderman and the cosmos sdk um it is uh it you know they they have a very they had a early bridge they've been sort of banging on like very you know the same software design since 2017 um you know uh it was a little bit sad for a while that because like essentially binance smart chain is like a clone of matic architecture um and it was sad that Matic was not also picking up use, and it's great to see Matic uh, uh, getting used. Um, you're seeing a lot more apps um, onboard users directly into Matic and, uh, without even going touching Ethereum. Uh, right. You've seen some very successful liquidity mining schemes um, running on top of Matic with more to come. Um, and you know, yeah, those are pretty. Uh, you know, this is a great demonstration of multi-chain innovation. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's giving, you know, as you increase the number of blockchains that people are able, that can, can do the tasks that they want on, um, the more, uh, you know, it, it starts to bring down gas prices. And, you know, mm -hmm. gas prices we saw over the weekend uh, were not just, peop ev you know, everyone being drunk in Miami, uh, but <laughs> also just, you know, the, the, the maturing of the multi-chain space. Got it. Um, and, and out of curiosity, do you think liquidity providers should explore the Polygonmatic opportunities uh, for their liquidity there? Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, it's a little bit challenging for us because there's no Uniswap V3 on uh, on Polygon for us to uh, to build support for. So you know, we're focused on on places where Uniswap V3 is going to show up. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, you know, if that changes, you know, we'll be you know we'll, we'll reevaluate support in our app. Um, mm -hmm. But there's some clearly some some exciting stuff happening uh, happening there. Um, I think in general, this is as I said, this, this is just going to be an ongoing. This is really going to be a challenge uh, uh, for the Web three builder state. We are we are through the we are across the Rubicon into the multi chain world, and uh, uh, th there's no going back. And uh, you know, there's the Gravity Dex is launching. There are bridges between all of these things. Your wallet is mm -hmm. connected to all kinds of crazy different networks. Right. Um, yeah. Honestly, like it's going to be nuts. Like, how are we, you know how are users going to know what assets they have on what chain? Like all of these things. It's just like all kinds of new UX problems to solve. Uh, been waiting for this for you know a good six years. So it's here. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Big opportunity for for Similia and as well integrating with all these other uh, layer twos. Um, question for you, what do you think, why do you think then the volume jumped over the last weekend on pairings for, by Similia? Why why did this happen now versus last weekend in, in your view? So, you know, I think there's a couple of things that are true. One is, I think Uniswap v3 is like your classic sort of, you know, biting the bullet on the innovator's dilemma, disruptive innovation, in the sense that like, you know, it's not just like a linear improve, it's not like Uniswap V2, but better. It's a, mm -hmm. it's basically Correct. a completely different product. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think 
And, you know, there's a lot of reasons, you know, we certainly believe that it's a better product, but we believe that this design direction um, is the future. Um, and that's why we're focused on it in Sommelier, uh, in trying to making this usable. But people are going to have to, you know, Uniswap V2 power users are still going to have to, you know, learn, you know, liquidity providers who are Uniswap V2 power users are still going to have to learn the ropes um, for Uniswap V3 and experiment. Um, and so we see a couple of things. One is you have a low gas price weekend, um, like, like we are. So suddenly it becomes a lot easier to kind of know that you're going to at least, you know, make enough fees. You, you have more sense that you're going to uh, make enough fees to, um, uh, uh, um, to uh, make enough fees to like, you know, just to like offset at least the gas prices of going in and out right. of the provider position. Right. Um, the market's been trade. I think the other thing is, is the market's been sort of trending sideways for a while. Um, and so more people are looking for yield um, rather than just, uh, uh, you know, by hodling. Um, and then more and more people are starting to be more and more people who were liquidity providers on Uniswap B2 and, uh, or, you know, are just trying to like start to gain experience with Uniswap B3 um, and the usability in improvements with sort of these suggested ranges that we launched with the pairings product um, as sort of the V1 of the pairing product, you know, help people get started. Um, and that's so awesome. that's, that's, I think what we're seeing. So would you say that Pairings by Sommelier has been a leading, you know, sort of liquidity provider platform for Uniswap V3? I think we've built, you know, a really good onboarding experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we both see, you know, liquidity moving through our system, but we also see a lot of people exploring different pairs and looking at, right, at like their suggested ranges. And how, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a helpful way of sort of making sense of, um, you know, whether or not you should be, you know, what you where you should be on as a liquidity provider. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're improving, we're improving all aspects of this, uh, you know, work continues on automated rebalancing, work continues on, uh, uh, and we have a bunch of new features coming out this week. All right, we're going to talk about that in a bit, but I'm going to, I'm going to come back and bring you now to last week a little more about what's happening and what look what you you know your advice to liquidity providers it was a it was a low gas price weekend do you think liquidity providers should expect low gas prices to continue in the future or was it just a blip just a anomaly in the high gas price world um i think there are going to be these periods of low gas prices um as the market is constantly shifting um i don't think that we have yet, and it's unclear if we ever will move to like a permanent low gas price regime um, uh, in, in Ethereum. Um, but we are, you know, uh, you know, more and more places for people to transact are showing up. Um, and as consumers have more options, um, that at least, you know, uh, creates like a sort of uh, downward pressure on, uh, on, on gas prices. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, sort of the emergence of L2s on top of Ethereum as well, um, which, you know, have a good chance of triggering like an order of magnitude uh, reduction, at least in, in gas prices to a certain extent for, for end users. Got it. Got it. I know with high gas prices, we saw the launch of Arbitrum last week. Uh, what's your view on that uh, new protocol, new, sorry, the new L2 uh, which Uniswap is uh, voting approved for governance approved voting to launch on. I think it's deployed now on, on Arbitrum. It is What's deployed. Your on Arbitrum? Um, yeah. So Uniswap, Arbitrum is in developer only mode uh, right now. What is, or, or Arbitrum is in developer only mode right now, which means that, you know, and like we've been looking into this, you know, we, I think we have, some of our team has applied for the developer program, but like there's no public information right now about how you even sync a full node or anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're still in the early days. Arbitrum is a technology I have been following and excited about since the paper came out um, in 2018, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I really liked that paper because it really pointed out a lot of the flaws that I saw in Truebit. Um, and like sort of Arbitrum was, a, was originally sort of positioned as like, tr you know, a better Truebit. Um, and uh, so I've been very excited about it. Um, the team is very, very impressive. It's like some of my favorite computer scientists. 
man, this stuff is space edge stuff. It's amazing. Like it, it's just like it's mind blowing uh, that it works. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, every time I look at this code base, I'm just like, holy shit! Like I can't believe we built something like this. Like mm -hmm. a sort of fully virtualized EVM um, is just it's amazing. Um, uh, you know, like. How, how long did it, you know, I mean, we had, I guess you had virtualization on IBM mainframes back in like the 70s. Um, so, you know, we, we were, we're slowly catching up with, uh, with, with, <laughs> with IBM mainframe technology, but, you know. I see, I see what you did there. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so will Sommelier launch on Arbitrum? Absolutely. Uh, we, we, were, we are going to go, you know, I think the biggest thing that we, that is like, you know, the biggest tension that we feel is concentrated liquidity versus you want to call it passive liquidity or, uh, or uh, I think passive liquidity are really two completely different product paradigms that are going to, are battling it out in the marketplace right now. Um, and um, there are certainly believers that, uh, uh, that passive liquidity is the, is the right solution. And there are certain, and you know we are we're trying to we, we think that there's a real opportunity in making the uh, concentrated liquidity uh, world really tractable. But as a result of focusing on that, we go where concentrated liquidity goes. Um, and so you know we are we're we are uh, it's really exciting that the Uniswap community really spoke clearly to the Uniswap Labs team that concentrated liquidity should be on sort of every true L2. And Arbitrum is, you know, the first AMM support. No, that's not true. The first, co you know, the first because uh, 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 loop ring is out there, and loop ring is a true L two that has an AMM on right. it. But it's the first right. uh, L two that um, supports Solidity and uh, contracts from main, from the Ethereum mainnet. Um, right. That uh, is a true L two, and it was. It, I think it was very aligned with the values of Uniswap as sort of a core. Uh, core component of the of the Ethereum ecosystem to be there. Um, so, Got it. you know, we're, and like our values are very aligned to that. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think everybody will be excited to see Similia on Arbitrum. So let's talk about, speaking of Similia and Arbitrum in the future, uh, what's next for Similia this week? Uh, what do you have coming down the pipe? We have two things that I think have been long awaited. Um, not the biggest, most long awaited thing. The biggest, most long awaited thing is a position manager, but, and we're not there yet. But uh, we have two long awaited things that we saw the need for um, before we even launched, but uh, you know, features take time. Um, one is the uh, uh, introduction of editable ranges. Uh, mm -hmm. So the sort of back end technical analysis that we are continuously like, working towards improving um, suggests a range. Um, but sometimes those, you know, the, the, the user has more insight. Uh, and like these ranges are just really a, a starting part and, a, and an alpha system and a bit of automated technical analysis to help people get started and not uh, 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 any way like definitive uh, about where people should put their liquidity. But it does uh, 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 sort of help correct a little bit for, you know, traders mental biases about you know where they can where they can put their liquidity with technical information so editable ranges are coming and the second wow. thing is that i think i really that i am even more excited about and i think is the, is 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 really is really an exciting thing um just for being the future of, of being a liquidity provider is we're gonna have deep linking into pairs um right. and so that means that being a liquidity provider can now become a shareable social artifact um uh, you know, you can you can share on your Twitter, you can share on your 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 Telegram in your Telegram chats. You know, uh, liquidity positions that you, you think are likely to be profitable, likely to be exciting. Uh, take you know uh, opportunities to get exposure to products that projects that you're excited. Um, right. And you know, as more and more tokens start getting designed for the AMM world, you know, it's like social is a very important way of filtering the noise. Um, and right now, nobody is providing a social experience around uh, being a liquidity provider, and Sommelier is going to be the first to do so this week. That's super exciting, um, and I and I like the fact because I, I do believe that you know money is community, and without community, you can't have money. Um, why do you think it is that um, you know uh, pools are not con you know are not socially 
you know, um, attractive or, or sharing them and making them easy to be socially shareable is something that maybe the, you know, some folks may not be as focused on as, as much as familiar. Why do you think that is? Um, you know, there's, there is, there are, there are three audiences, you know, out there. Um, and, and this has always been our thesis is that there are three audiences of liquidity providers. Um, mm -hmm. one, 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 one group is like sort of the professional trading houses. Uh, that are in your Uniswap, USDC, uh, ETH, and other you know big pairs, um, and you know it, it's people whose job it. There's people whose job it is to sort of manage all the bots and allocate the liquidity and allocate the trading ranges. Uh, mm -hmm. Full time job for someone. There is right. um, there is the there is the stable you know the like for like stable coin pair world uh, where people are. Uh, where it's very predictable where you should put liquidity and fees are not as high, but you know, it's a, it's an easy to position to manage. And you see a lot of projects, I think, really focusing uh, on the, these two use cases. And really sommelier is really focused on the third use case, which is, you know, I have a project, I want exposure to the asset, I like the project, I like the coin, I want exposure to the asset, whether it's the latest meme coin or like a, your cool new, you know, uh, 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 sort of futures, ETH futures contract or token futures contract or whatever else is showing up in the in the V2 world. And I want to make I want to I want to earn yield while supporting that project. Um, yeah, that's really, you know, what we're, we're what we're all about, you know, sharing your sharing, uh, you, you know, everybody knows where to find USDC ETH, a USDC link, right? Every, mm -hmm. That's, you know, those are the front pages of the internet, but you know, as right. you get into the long tail and you're looking for those diamonds in the rough, um, and that's why social becomes important. That's awesome. Uh, well, I, I definitely think uh, I agree. And I think uh, making it shareable, making pools shareable and, and easy to find seems to be to continue to uh, aim towards helping more users uh, take advantage of Uniswap V3. And, and I think, uh, of course, see Sommelier as, as a helpful partner in, in, in making that, taking that leap or more, or even uh, taking the plunge as it were into the pool. All right, well, we're super excited to see what we have launched. Anything else you want some Sommelier LPs or global LPs to remember as we get through this week? I mean, the, the other thing is we're gonna be, we're, we, we are going to have a, a UI element in this release to remind people uh, whether if their MetaMask is configured for, uh, is configured ah. for a network we don't support, so. You know, that, that piece of UI friction will finally get sorted out. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. And thanks for taking care of that. That's going to be a, a key detail for the Polygon Matic folks <laughs> who are watching the show. All right. Well, uh, that's uh, exciting and a lot that we have planned for this week. Uh, looking forward to talking with you next week and seeing how the launch went. Yep. All right. Thanks, Zaki. See ya.